This episode, truck, trailer, or car, what do you use? Are you contemplating changing a vehicle coming up for the new year? Well, Larry and John have a discussion about vehicles. What do you use? Do you use a car, a truck, or a trailer? Welcome to the Handyman Pros Radio Show. Home improvement and maintenance tips from the pros. Thanks for listening to another edition of the Handyman Pros Radio Show, where our goal is to help save you time, money, and aggravation on your home maintenance and repair. This edition is entitled, Truck, Trailer, or Car, What Do You Use? To help me explain, I'm here with my ever-cheerful co-host and old buddy, Johnny. Here's yes, Johnny. There you go. All right. <laughs> yes, sir. Johnny, well, we, we came on this one. How did we come on this show? <laughs> um... Larry, you know, I, um, you know, what I've been doing this, uh, you know what I took, I, I, I actually, I actually found, uh, a, it's getting cool here and I found a door that was leaking. Yes. Believe that, a, a, the weather stripping. Oh, what a surprise. Yeah. There's a surprise. You know, and, and I just happened to stumble onto it. I got up in the morning, I go downstairs, you know, and I'm like, man, where's that cold air roll? And I just feel around, it's the garage door, the one we use the most, you know. And I and I probably put some new weather stripping on that thing about, mm, you know, maybe a couple of years ago, I guess. And it's already, you know, gone. It's that cheap stuff, you know, you just, you just pull it off and you put on a new a new piece, right? Yep. And yep. problem solved. I couldn't believe it, you know. But, uh, you know, but I will say that uh, I went over to, uh, I had to go get some of it, and I went over, and um, my car's getting full <laughs> of tools. <laughs> what a surprise. You know? What a surprise. Yeah, yeah so, it, it, it's, a, it's a unique thing. So to give folks perspective, I have a Nissan NV2500 high roof truck, and I basically have every single thing I own in there. John runs out of a, an SUV, and um, and we read and a lot. And when I need a truck, I, I He calls me. Reason. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, he calls me, and uh, yeah, which is really true. And um, and then I also have a I have a little utility trailer that I use, which is a five by eight utility trailer for when I'm doing I don't know. Usually it's landscape jobs and stuff like that that I use that with because I don't want to put landscape products in my in my tr- um, truck. Oh. But we or between, hauling a lot of wood. Yeah, or, yeah, or, yeah, or that you know, and I can inc- I can increase my brain capacity by whacking my head on the wood that I store up there, which I did on one of our recent jobs. Thank you very little. <laughs> uh, it's healed up, by the way, Johnny. I'm just telling you. Finally, um, it's been picking scabs out of my hair. Well, from- the outside did, anyways. <laughs> yeah that yeah yeah that right well the inside will never be right um but, but be that as it may we we came on this and we see this a lot in a lot of the facebook posts and stuff about what you know what are people what are people's considerations what are they thinking about when they get out there to to actually you know either run a handyman business or just what they think about when they're when they're thinking about trying to move product right because if even if you're just a homeowner and you're doing a lot of movement of product if you're doing anything you know do you get it delivered or do you rent a trailer or do you use your own pickup truck or, or what is it that you use you know and so we decided we do a, a show on that because it's just there's there's some things that that i know and in, in uh about what it takes to actually effectively do a job right john so you had a question for me <laughs> well you know the, the the question is i know that you know your your background is in is in trucks and a lot of folks you know when you go out and you look at you look at trucks um trucks and trailers you know what what am i you know what, what is the purpose right what am i going to do with it right. how big you know what how heavy duty should it be? Right. Um, you know, the maneuverability, you know, there's a lot of different things. And I know that, you know, you were, you were you used to sell trucks, big trucks. And, uh, you know, of course you're going to run across all, all the answers to those things. So, yeah. And, and so just a little bit on my background, I worked for a medium and heavy duty truck dealership. And when I talk medium to heavy duty, that's 26,000 pounds. Well, it's actually about 19,000 pounds gross vehicle. So this is, say, Ford F-550 or Dodge F-550 size and up. 
all the way to off-road tr- uh, trucks that carried 500,000 pounds. Um, so any that when we say medium to heavy duty, we're talking about big trucks, not small trucks. I just want people to have a clarification. I did, did not sell pickup trucks. The principles apply all the way down to a matchbox, but I just want people to understand that that's my background. I sold a lot of very specialized equipment as well, um, things like concrete trucks and hydro excavator trucks and septic pump trucks and things that have very unique sets of, of um, requirements or parameters in which they operate. And so that's where my qualifications are, and it's one of the reasons why I feel I can speak on this topic with a little bit of knowledge just because I have a basis of doing a lot of math and, and understanding a lot of the nuance of what it takes to actually effectively do a job for even for a handyman job, and, you're just, and while people don't think it's a big deal, it can be. So when we talk about this, John, and you and I have talked about this, we talk Mm -hmm. about this a lot. This isn't really much different than planning anything, but we talk a lot about planning. But there's a lot of things you want to think about. Um, One is just what job are you doing and and what tools do you need and all of that kind of thing. If you're a handyman, are you a guy that goes into a job and do you work? Do you do bathrooms? I'm just throwing it out there. But if you do bathrooms and you're on site for a week, that's a different parameter than myself, who works largely on a day rate basis. You know, I do a, I go in and do a to do list in somebody's house, and it's uh, you know it's several different things, but I'm rarely there more than a than a full day, in in general terms. Um, the other thing is, you know, how often are you actually moving, and then what is your moving environment? So when I say that, what I mean is, if you're doing multiple jobs a day, for example. That's a little bit different than if you're doing a day-long type job. Um, Do you work in an urban versus a suburban versus a rural environment? All of those things play into what your vehicle choice should be to be effective. Because, John, what's our moniker? Save time, money. Time, money. Aggravation, right? You know? So, for example, I'm just going to throw this out really quickly. If you're dragging a trailer around, which is a lot of people do it, and uh, you know, even even I do. I have a trailer when I'm doing when I'm doing a lot of stuff. Not so great in a really urban environment. If I'm working in a condo, not so great to be dragging a trailer into a condo development. Just generally doesn't work. There's not a lot of room to do that. There's not a, lo- a lot of room to turn it around and get it out sometimes. Um, and I know that that sounds funny, but these are things that you have to think about. You know, where do you do most of your work? What is your driving environment, and all of that kind of thing. And, again, um, these are things that you can kind of take your data that you're using now and you can, and you can figure out exactly what your jobs are. Um, I use a really big truck, and, and uh, it's really big. I mean, it's tall. I can stand up in it, right? John, you use your car. Um, those, are, those determinants are used basically on I come out of my previous businesses. I was in the vending business, and I like to have a lot of stuff with me. You know, I like to be able to handle a, a, almost any problem that comes up I can do out of my truck. In fact, people say, man, you got a lot of stuff in that truck. What can you do in that truck? <laughs> I said, the better question is, what can I do? What can I not do? You know, and so because I have everything from, from uh, shovels and picks and, and the digging tools to concrete drills to uh, concrete. I don't carry my concrete saw with me. But I do carry a concrete drill, two, two concrete drills with me, actually, and a whole, just a whole bunch of other things that I use occasionally, but when I need them, I need them, you know. And, um, and I don't have a good storage facility either, John, and you know that. You have a better storage facility. You have a whole half of a garage that you use to store things. I do not have that, so everything gets stored in my truck. And, folks, that's a parameter. You have to think about that. So if you have all this stuff, if you have a good garage or you have a mini storage unit or, you're, or, you're, or you use, you know, whatever it is of where you store your product, that determines your vehicle as well. Um, so, Johnny, chime yeah, in here with yeah, questions I mean, I, anytime. I, so, uh, well, there's – so we, we've, we've um, kind of addressed this before, uh, but – you know, I I always know what the job is that I go to. I know you're kind of you know you you're doing all kinds of different things. Um, I'm, I get I get very focused on on maybe one or two things. So that's why when you say the storage, I don't have like a big truck that I store all that material in, because I generally don't have that with me all the time. You right, know, I right. put it in my garage, and then when I need it, I know that job's there. That's when I move it into you know a car, and I've been getting by with that right now, and for all the reasons because you know the inflation, the price of cars, and everything is you know uh, or trucks, um, 
yeah, that's not going to agree with me right now. <laughs> so, right, right. Um, you know, but, uh, it, you know, and the other thing is, I think uh, one of the other parameters to look at is, you know, we've talked to a lot of other handymen out there. Um, some of the some of the guys out in North Carolina, so you know, no matter where you are, but you might be doing big, heavy timber work more than I would ever do. You Correct. know, they're yep. they're replacing joists, they're do, doing all kinds of things. You know, we've had a couple of those folks on, um, and that's a whole different animal. Um, I don't do that big, heavy work, so I don't need a big, heavy truck or a big, heavy trailer. Um, but if I was doing that kind of stuff, that's certainly a consideration. Correct. Yeah. And that, and that's it. Know your business, I guess, is where I'm going with this. Yeah. Know, have a real idea of what it is that you're going to do. And this concept of what you should do comes before you think about money or any of that, because back to time at money and aggravation yeah this is a capital investment and depending on what you're going to buy this will last many many years the last thing you want to do is make the wrong choice and have to live with something you can't stand for all of those years and it's just not a good situation so you know think this one through really put some thought into this and really understand what you're trying to do what you think you're going to do and where you're headed you know, as far as what your needs are for the for the vehicle. Not everybody needs a van. Not everybody needs a pickup truck. Not everybody needs a trailer. It's very, very specific. And John brought up a great example of if you're if you're moving a lot of lumber or you're doing some big heavy work, you need to not be thinking about a car. And even a pickup truck might not be the best answer. Um, if you have storage concerns like me, uh, a van might be the answer, or maybe a good sized trailer might be the answer as well, because a big box trailer kind of gives you a mobile shop on wheels. Um, we talked to Kevin Cronemeyer, and Kevin uses a, an old U Haul truck. He's actually got, like, I think he said it was a 26 footer. He's got a mobile shop in there. Now, that's the kind of work that he does. So it's, that's re- right. it's really specific to what he needs. And then Kevin's also like me. He's like, yeah, I don't want to be loading my truck around. Every day, I'm like, yeah. It's, it's, it's one of the reasons I have a big truck is I don't want to load my truck like John does every day for every job. I just, I just basically can get in it and go. And that's actually a, something you need to think about too. How, what do you want? You know, do you want to spend the first half an hour of your day or the night before? Either way, loading your truck for your next day. It's not a bad thing. It's just a thing. It's something to think about. You know, so then we get into things like, you know, consider your fuel mileage. And and also, I want to say, consider your load. So how big a load are you going to carry? I could not carry all of my stuff in John's truck because it weighs too much. It would probably break his axles. Um, And so, you know, if you're if you're going to carry a lot of stuff, you need to go heavier. You need to go, you know, you need to think be thinking about three quarter ton or one ton. Kevin's at twenty six thousand. Right. I think. Yeah, I think he's at twenty three thousand gross vehicle. So he can carry a lot of weight on his truck. Um, and but, you know, but it's all about trade offs. Right. So the more load that you can carry, generally, you're going to pay the price in fuel mileage. And of course, now we're in an inflationary period and fuel you know, is going through the roof. And so it concern it's concerning. But at the same time, what does it cost you if you don't have enough room and you've got to make multiple trips, you know, back to get a tool or something like that? Those are the considerations. Those are the hidden costs of having the wrong vehicle. If you have the wrong vehicle, you know, you can, you can, you can cost yourself a lot of money as compared to, you know, again, thinking it through. Um, time, one th- bit of a tip here. Talk to other contractors that you've seen. If you've seen a guy running around with a trailer, ask him what's it like. You know, ask him what his business parameters and if he were going to change, what would he do? You know, or if you're thinking about a trailer, you know, and and those are things that that just will give you actual real life. And they'll and they'll 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 freely tell you, you know, yeah, you know, it's great except for this or it's great or it's or it's really great. I really love it because of this. You know, if I were to change anything, I might change this. I might change, you know, because we haven't gotten into interior layouts and we're not even going to touch that. That's a whole bunch of there's so many different ways to lay out a truck on the inside for your particular operation that you just have to figure out what works for you and and make adjustments appropriately. Appropriately, so um, we're not going to get on that. We've talked a little bit about it in some other shows where we've talked about using boxes and things like that, but we're mm-hmm. not going to get we're not going to delve in on that one. Um, 
So, yeah, and, and so we'd already talked about, you know, parameters to think about length of time on the job. You know, when I'm doing a job, like if I'm doing a, re, a re, remodel on my house, one of my rental houses, you know, that's almost a move-in situation. I go down for at least a week, right? And I basically, I unload the truck. I just unload the truck because I can. You know, I have a space to keep this stuff. And, and that's a different parameter than, a, like I said, going around just day, day to day. Um, traffic, you know, we live in... We do most of our work, I guess, John, probably I would call it suburban. At least I do. Almost all my yeah. work is kind of yeah. suburban. So it's nice to have the van because I don't have to worry about dragging a trailer. But at the same time, I could drag a trailer pretty easily. There's very few places I couldn't get he, into with a trailer. He, yeah, I was going to say that around here uh, in most rural areas, you know, you get away with a trailer. You can buy a nice trailer and and uh you know outfit it all like a like a mobile shop like you were talking about right right and a lot of i see a lot of contractors around here with uh with that kind of setup yeah you know yeah and sure. they get it and they and you can get away with that here um there are <laughs> i you know there are certain there are certain places there are certain homes in this uh this area that uh you know in a lot of other areas uh that have really um elevated windy driveways yep. that i'm not sure you're going to get away with that <laughs> yep. but uh you know it's uh but, but for the most part you know that works out that works out well for them trucking um, your stuff to the job from the street is not a lot of fun well and that's what i was just going to say you yeah. know that's that's something that you know even um even my tool bag when i park on the street and some of these homes are kind of set back and I have to park on the street because there's other contractors either there already, uh, or there's you know there, there's a, there's wh wh whomever's occupied the driveway, um, and I just like to stay out of their their way because I know how I drive, but I don't know how they drive. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, especially with some of these these trucks and trailers and stuff. Right. But you know, but the point is that even dragging my tool bag, you know, walking with it is uh is pretty exhausting actually you know carrying around 50 pounds you know 60 pounds of tools or whatever right um and then walking back and forth so yeah you know, you and, kinda have to... and that walking back and forth is something that people don't really think about much so this comes out of my life as a vendor right working as a vending machine operator i ran the the time that you spend walking back and forth can be huge and it and, it, and you you really, you know, again, our goal is to help you save you time, money, and aggravation. If you've got to walk out to the street and it's a pretty good distance, there's a time frame that it's going to take you to do that. And you need to realize that that's billable hours and you're actually, you end up tacking it onto your customer's bills or you're doing it for free. And it's just not, you know, there's a time and a place of when you need to get in. Now, again, everything it's it's not, you can't draw one easy conclusion for every single job but you'll have a consensus of your area and your and then maneuverability like how maneuverable is your your vehicle you know there's places i can get my van that i cannot get i could not get a trailer and there's places john you can get your car that i can't get my van mostly due to to uh, overhead right because my van's tall you know and yeah. I, I can't get in under things and so all of these things are things that you just need to think about when you're when you're consistent considering buying, um, um, you know, a, a new vehicle, if you want to call it that, or, or a trailer or whatever. Um, we're also big proponents of flexibility, right, John? So, you know, I'm, I'm like, what, what's the most flexible job you can do? And again, it's all built around what's my actual, what am I actually doing? What's my day-to-day -day look like? And so, you know, flexibility, it's, it's one of the, one of the great advantages of a trailer is it's very flexible. If your car breaks down, your power plant, basically your power plant breaks down, you can hook it up to anything pretty much anyway you can hook it to anything and tow it around and you're still good to go can't do that when you have a drive line on your vehicle right meaning, mm -hmm. meaning like in my case my engine or my transmission goes down i'm out of business until it's fixed you know if i have a trailer nope i can just i can hook it up to something else and rock and roll you know still good so think about that kind of stuff as well and then lastly i always like to talk about money what's it going to cost how much of an investment are you going to make and that and you notice where that is, John. Where is that in this conversation? It's the the last thing. It's there, last. Mary. Yeah, it's last. <laughs> right. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's the old salesman in me, but you know, you know it as well as I do. You you can't. You can have a base idea of what you're thinking about investing, but until you really get down to it, you need to you need to sort of not think about the money. Yeah. You know. Yeah. 
Yes, and and I will also say that even this conversation, um, when, when I think about this conversation in particular, is that you know if if you're out there as a listening audience and you're thinking about getting into the handyman business, these, this this is a lot of stuff that you need to be thinking about. Right. Right. Of what kind of investment that you want to make, and sometimes it might be too 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 heavy of an investment. Correct. Um, you know, it, it might it might kind of shock you how much you might have to you know put in there if you already don't have some of these some of these things. Um, and you know, if you want that if you want that trailer, you want that. So it, you you need to you need to do all the considerations and all the and all the you know all the value here, and then put a number on it of what you really want to do. Because to me, I started off you know really small. And I kind of, I kind of stayed with. I've, I've done some big jobs, but I kind of learned how to utilize my, my, uh, my full size SUV to its fullest for, for this thing. You know, just being organized, being able to, you know, uh, you know, think through that whole thing. And we've talked about this numerous times on the shows. But, you know, and, and then knowing what my job is in particular, and then packing, packing some of that, um, the net difference. For the day, right in, into that into that into that thing. So I'm I'm getting along with it right now. Um, you know, I'm thinking about moving to another platform, but you know, uh, the way prices are, what I said earlier. But you know, I think this. You know, your your comment here on the investment is is something that yeah, at the bottom of the thing, you you know, here it is the you know the the, the balance sheet of what what you really want to do, and. And just be, you know, just be honest with yourself of what you, you know, want to do. See, to me, like I said, I, I do some smaller jobs. Um, you know, we've we've talked to the, the other guys on the show that done really big jobs. So they're in a different they're in a different category than I am, you know, and I'm in a different category than some of these big contractors. So it's, you know, I'm kind of at a, a good meeting for myself right now. But um and and you know, I just want to make I'm, one quick comment. And this comes from being in the trucking business: is, is that if you are starting off, you don't need the Mac Daddy program because guess what? You're gonna you you haven't even found your niche yet. So start off in a very inexpensive mode. Get yourself running. Figure out exactly what you're gonna do. Just like John, like John's talking about this. John started off with. Uh, with his SUV and has never moved out of it because it works for him. I started off with a with a uh, Sprinter because I actually had a, a tall Sprinter van left over from my vending business, and that's what I started off with because I had it. I didn't go and buy something special for it. Now, I did outfit it with some shelves just to make it a little more usable for what I was doing, but I already had that vehicle. You know, I had that vehicle. And then after that vehicle started getting a little long in the tooth um, and I was well established by then, then I bought I bought my Nissan, you know, and uh, I really, you know, I liked my Sprinter. I'd tell people, if you're, if you're interested in a tall van, go look at a gas Sprinter. At the time, I had a diesel. It's a long story. Anyway, we're not going to get into it. Um, but that's how we started. So if you're starting off, just be careful. You know, don't go don't go crazy and go spend a lot of money because it, it, it puts you behind the eight ball straight away. You know, put your money where it's more important. Right. Um, but. That, that's a great that's a great piece of advice right there. You know, get your legs under you and, and figure out what, uh, you know, where your niche is, what you want to do. And, you know, and at that time, then you can make the make the move. But, uh, you know, don't get overextended. Yeah. Yeah. And, and it's and the thing is, is that your job, you, you, you will change probably, you know, you you will. I don't know. You'll go from one type of job to another potentially. And and if you do that and you've bought a piece of equipment that's specific, I used to see this in the truck business all the time. They'd buy a specific piece of equipment to do a specific job and then their their whole business model would change. And the next thing you know, they're like, can I get rid of this? I'm like, yeah, I got to find another guy just like you. That's going to be hard. You know, it's not that easy. Um, so anyway, with that, you know, that's that's why we talk about this kind of stuff. You know, but and it is an investment, you know, and you're in my opinion, I'm going to leave it at that. Your goal should be make it so it helps save you time because time equals money. You know, that's really the key is make sure that whatever you set yourself up with is easy to use and keeps you organized and gets you close to the job. You know, all those kinds of things. It really helps you work smoothly and effectively because too many people will cut corners and say, oh, I don't want to spend that extra, you know, thousand dollars. Right. Well, a thousand bucks if you have to walk from the street up to the house, you know, just for example, 
um, that's only about a week's worth of walking where you've got that thousand dollars paid back, plus the wear and tear in your body and the and the this you know the the grumbling oh, I should have spent the money mm-hmm. on it, you know kind of thing, right? And we've we've all been there and done mm-hmm. that, you know. We've all been there and yeah. done that. So, um, yeah. Anything else there, John? Is there any, well, you got any questions? No, I think you covered it. I think you covered it. Uh, you know, well. So uh, you know, once again, I think that everybody out there that's uh, that's listening, out, I hope this uh, hope this is of value uh, to you. You know, we were just uh, sitting here talking uh, over the last couple of days, actually, about uh, you know trucks and trailers and so on and so forth, and. Um, you know, and, it's because Johnny's uh, thinking said, about shifting his platform. We, that's why. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, I almost had to there, and I'm glad I didn't. But uh, you know, I, um, you know, like I said, it just. I, I think the best advice right now is that is to know your business, know yourself. Uh, you know what your niches are and, and where you want to go with this thing. Um, and and, and know, I just that's, want, that's I, my that's one of the takeaways I'm I'm, I'm walking away with here. Yeah, and one is, other, one other quick I, quick thing too, mm-hmm. just thinking about it too, is don't forget about delivery, right? Delivery and or renting a truck or a piece of equipment. If you have a if if you're not doing this stuff every single week, rent something or get delivery, right, John? I mean, you you everybody delivers, you know. Yeah, it costs you extra money, but you just factor it in, right? You know, it's like right. You know, I'll give you a well, fine example. Well, sometimes. Uh, I'll give yeah, you an example. Ahead. I bought a pallet of concrete, you know, a whole pallet, <laughs> right? So it's 42 bags of concrete. Well, Lowe's delivered it for like 20 bucks. I was like, no, that's a done deal. You know? uh, yeah, that's a done deal. You know, and right. the, the guy pulls up, he takes his forklift, he says, where do you want it? And I said, right over there, right? Because I'm like, I am not moving those 80-pound bags all over this property. Done deal. Even with, I can move that pallet, but I was like, done deal. Nope, took delivery. Right. So th- well, so and that's that another stuff. thing, you know, yeah. when I go to do the do do my flooring, I, I'm not I'm not going to go pick up all that all that LVP. I'm going to have that delivered. <laughs> oh, you're going to pick it up eventually. Trust me. <laughs> oh, I'll pick it up piece by piece, but I'm not picking it up. You know, they can they can uh, dump it off here. But, but that's a that's a good tip, you know. And if you do need a trailer. Um, you know, for a, a specific job, you can go rent them, right? Yeah. You so, can. Yep. you know, that's a that's another option. So don't get tied down to you know purchasing something that you're not going to use uh, very often. Uh, you know, either. So because you have to store it also. By the way, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> that, another that's, thing. That's the that's the other side of it too. Yeah. So there's there's a whole lot of things that you need to think about. All right, with that, John, you know, I think. I, the last time you took the spaceship apart, weren't they talking about changing platform on you? They they <laughs> no, were tired, but it had a, tra- they were, they had a trailer t- hitch. <laughs> trailer hitch. <laughs> All right, folks. If you enjoy the Handyman Pros Radio Show, please tell your friends and neighbors. We really appreciate it. Send them the link to this show so that they can uh, listen to our bad jokes and listen to our postulations on this, that, and the next thing when it comes to home maintenance and repair. Um, we do appreciate it, as always, for you listening. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, email questions at handymanprosradioshow.com or at handymanprosradioshow at gmail.com. Websites, handymanprosradioshow.com. Uh, handyman, at Handyman Pros on Facebook is always good. Uh, and Twitter, at Handyman Radio. Thank you for listening. We will see you next week on the Handyman Pros Radio Show.